So good morning, everyone. My name is Nicole Witham. I am the statewide coordinator for the WSU Food Systems Program. Uh, welcome to our Food Systems Hub for Friday, June 26th. Uh, we'd like to start all each of our hub meetings with a photo from one of our um, events. This here is a circle up at a farm walk at Mariposa Farm in Everson, Washington back in September of 2018. It was a really um, fantastic day at Mariposa Farm and um, it was a fully bilingual farm walk which also included um, the original farm owners who had a really fantastic story about how they planned succession and ownership to the new owners. Um, so it was a lovely day. Today we are going to run through our regular hub happenings and also um, have some guests for everyone. So first um, we're going to go through some of these items. I'd share with you a little bit about our needs assessment tool, another food security survey that has um, been released just in the past week or so. And then today we're going to be welcoming Henry Wong and um, Dominique. Dominique, I'm sorry, I'm, what's, how do I pronounce your last name? Julian. It is Julian. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Um, from Business Impact Northwest, and then we'll have uh, plenty of time to share and talk through any other resources, events, and things that are happening. So as you enter our Zoom room, please take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat box, who you are, where you are lo located, and something if you um, are interested in including is information about the ancestral lands that you may be broadcasting from. So me personally, I live in Chimicum, Washington and uh, out on the Olympic Peninsula and that is where I am working from um, and is the ancestral lands of the Chimicum tribe, which is actually an extinct um, coastal Salish tribe. So uh, as you know, I'm the statewide coordinator for the food systems program. So please take a moment to enter that information for yourself in the chat and say hello to everyone. Also, please use the chat today to include any questions, other resources that you'd like to share, links, um, anything that's happening. Uh, it'll also help prompt me to uh, kind of guide our conversation as we move into discussion time. So we're with the Washington State University Food Systems Program. We grew out of what once was our small farms program, um, really broadening our scope to attempt a holistic view of the food system. You can see on the right hand side there, um, these are some of the topics that we attempt to kind of categorize our work within, but um, really, uh, really um, excited to continue to build relationships with all of you through our hub work as well. Um, we have team members that are located throughout the entire state, including extension offices in all 39 counties, um, including a tribal office uh, extension in the Colville Reservation. And uh, we encourage you to get to know our team. Many folks uh, tune into these meetings and our uh, WSU faculty and staff, as well as external partners like many of you that help do this amazing food systems resource provider work. So the hub is something that has grown out of uh, COVID response needs, but quite, I wanted to also just let all of you know, those that have been participating, that we have been having a lot of conversations about transitioning um, the hub to basically just a food systems hub. And this would be highly connected to um, kind of our strategic planning in general and how we had hoped to move our work forward. So, um, and as many of you may have recognized a lot of the different things that we talk about and have um, been able to kind of garner resources for aren't necessarily exactly related to COVID, but have been maybe exacerbated or um, uh, catalyzed by COVID. So we thank you all for continuing to participate. You can go to our website um, where you can connect with the hub, which has all the resources. And then we also have an event calendar that we do our best to keep updated with the current happenings that are coming out, including webinars, um, even uh, trainings and uh, other events. 
We also have a lot of surveys happening right now. I hope you all aren't completely surveyed out. I know that there's a lot of information that folks are trying to get from you right now that is highly crucial. Um, we are more of those folks. So they right now we are uh, deploy, continuing to blow deploy our food systems needs assessment tool. This is a weekly needs assessment survey that you can um, quickly run through. It's helping to inform decision-making processes and uh, resource allocation throughout the state. It's also helping to track information and changes over time in regards to food systems. Another survey that has recently been um, put out is a food security survey and I believe that there is an end date to this mid-July I believe July 17th I want to say and I could be completely wrong if there's anyone on the line that knows the exact date please chime in but um, this is something that we would love for all of you to take yourselves to share with your networks widely it's very uh, consumer facing um, we are also hearing from um, folks that we really need a lot of help spreading this on the east side of the state. So if you are located in um, an eastern county and have access to email, listserv, social media, whatever the case may be, please share this widely with your networks. You can find a link to this on our website, on our directly on our food systems uh, website homepage that will take you to the survey and then um, if you do have a chance to do a screen capture, that is the, also the, the link there on the screen. So today's guests um, are from Business Impact Northwest, and thank you very much for being here. Um, Henry and Dominique have both been highly engaged with the Hub since the beginning, and um, we're really grateful for all of the resources that they've continued to share. So we wanted to invite them here today to um, take a deeper dive into the work that they do, uh, giving all of you a better understanding of what it is that they specialize in, and also um, some of the recent uh, resources and trainings they've rolled out and maybe more that are coming up. So I will now hand it off to you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, go ahead. All right, thank you, Nicole. So uh, I'm gonna, let me share. I'm going to share our website just because we've we've tried to make our website the starting point for for people who want to get access to Business Impact Northwest or utilize our services. So I'm, I'm just going to leave this up here, but uh, I don't have a formal presentation. But, uh, and then feel free, Dominique, feel free to jump, jump in if you have anything to add. But uh, my name is Henry Wong. I'm the director of the Food Business Resource Center and Special Projects at Business Impact Northwest. So Business Impact Northwest is a nonprofit CDFI, Community Development Financial Institution, dedicated to serving low-income and underbanked entrepreneurs by providing access to capital and comprehensive business technical assistance. And officially, our mission is to grow businesses that create jobs in underserved communities with the vision that all business owners have an equal opportunity to succeed. So on the, on the lending side, we we, uh, we focus on entrepreneurs in economically marginalized communities. Uh, some of our areas of focus include people of color owned businesses, women owned, veteran owned, immigrant refugee, LGBTQ and rural owned businesses. So those are kind of our, some of our main mission areas. With our lending, we do business loans anywhere from 5,000 to $350,000. And we do lending in Oregon and Washington. And so that's kind of our lending side. And on the lending side, if you if you want to get a, a deeper dive into what we find, how we find that if you go to fund your business, we really built out a, a comprehensive guide that shows you that explains better what we do on the lending side. So there's even like a funding navigator that if you have if you're a client and you're trying to figure out can we can business impact with what's be an option, then there's a a little navigator you can go through to figure that out. So, so that's all the lending side. The other part of our business is our technical assistance side, as I mentioned. So on the technical assistance side, we house the Washington Women's Business Center, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and then we also have a Food Business Resource Center, which I'll talk a little bit more about. 
So I'm going to start off just playing a video that we created, which I think really highlights a lot of what we do. So hopefully the sound works too. Business Impact Northwest is a resource for entrepreneurs, whether you're a new business owner or established. And the three main ways that we help those individuals is through lending, through different classes and trainings, and through one-on-one -on -one business coaching. You know, it's hard to run a business in Seattle. It's such an expensive place to do everything and to have a resource like Business Impact Northwest that's completely free and that offers coaching, lending classes, all this stuff, it's just, it's awesome. I so appreciate how much they care about their clients. Like the level of care and consideration through the loan process was incredible. And I know I would not have gotten that anywhere else. We help business owners to get the classes that you need, the training that you need, and to get the capital that you need to get your business off the ground. So yeah, so that's just a kind of a short summary of some of the impact that we have. But uh, as, and as far as the technical side, so I mentioned that we house the Washington Women's Business Center, the Veterans Business Outreach Center. Those are two SBA funded programs that offer uh, technical assistance specifically to certain communities. And then we also just launched the Food Business Resource Center, which is a third program center for us. And that's that's really how we got connected with this, this hub. And so kind of, so I'll talk a little bit more about what we're doing with the Food Business Resource Center. So basically with the Food Business Resource Center, we've really built it as a one-stop shop for Washington State food entrepreneurs to get skills, resources, networks and marketplace opportunities that they need to either launch, fund, or grow a successful food or farm related business. So, and as I mentioned before, our mission is really to grow businesses that create jobs in underserved communities. So that same mission carries over with the Food Business Resource Center as well. It's just focused more on farm and food businesses just because we understand that there's, there are pretty particular needs for food and farm businesses specifically. And we, that's a lot of what, a lot of the businesses that we, we do, that we do support are based, are food based or farm based. So that's kind of, so it made sense to have a separate program center really focused on that. So that's what the, we're doing with the FBRC is what we're calling it. And the key thing with the food business resource center, we're not trying to recreate the wheel or duplicate any existing efforts. Really one of the key things is just bringing together all the, technical resources that are out there currently. So all, you know, all our resource providers that we already partner and work with, other people that are doing similar things or other pieces and that are, in, are involved with that whole food ecosystem. So we're really just trying to bring everything together and package it in a way that for an entrepreneur who's going, looking for services, they can quickly and easily navigate what's out there. So, so we'd like to, we really want to focus on thinking about it from the entrepreneur's perspective on okay if you're if I'm a if I'm a new entrepreneur trying to start a food business where can I go to really understand what's out there and what I need specifically to basically go from business idea all the way to an end market so so some of the things that we envision being part of that is some kind of path navigator that really helps an entrepreneur regardless of what stage they're at they can quickly go and find out, okay, here's where I am on that spectrum. Here are some resources I can start plugging into for support in getting me to the next step. So, and maybe that includes some concierge service or some kind of more handholding services along the way to help use that navigator. And along with that, that might, there might be business coaching. Uh, there might be a resource directory that really helps connect the pieces, you know, an events calendar that, that brings in all the events that the various providers and resources have going on. So it's a really kind of like a centralized area for which makes it easy for an entrepreneur to navigate the system. So, and then along with that, so that being the first step, bringing everything together, will also highlight where there's gaps. And that's another, that's another part where we can come in and 
with our expertise in developing programming and trainings, we can start to fill in some of those gaps that are needed along that pathway. So, so that's kind of an overview of our organization and what our food business resource center is. And I, do you have anything to add, Dominique? Along the yeah, I mean, I, I guess I will say that this comes out of also a passion that both uh, Henry and I have. Um, I come from an entrepreneur, uh, you know, MBA that was focused in food, food systems. Henry, uh, in his past, has had a food truck. Uh, so we really come at this from uh, really seeing a gap in our own clients uh, and the people that we had worked with. So how we can collaborate with others um, to sort of start to support that system more holistically. Um, yeah, so, and I think that, you know, the, I, we will totally acknowledge the farm sector is the sort of newer side for us. Um, and so that's why partnerships with the food system, you know, with uh, this group um, and how we can support business side services to farms. Uh, where we're never, we're not the farmers, we're not putting things in the ground. <laughs> and we're not even going to say that we're those expertise, but you know, uh, when PPP loans were available to farmers, we are definitely available to help support those sort of things. You know, cash flow is cash flow. Um, and thinking about getting on Instagram or social media or direct marketing, those are the kinds of things that we really see that we can support farmers. Um, and it, as it relates to this group. So, yeah, and brings kind of Henry to the some of the program stuff. That we've yeah, done. so now touching uh, based on some of the things we've been doing recently. So uh, obviously, if as part of really being trying to build out that resource directory and that navigator, part of what a lot of what we've been doing recently has been just sitting in, participating on a lot of food and farm group calls, and just getting really plugged into the whole food ecosystem to understand what's what's needed, what's out there, and making those connections. And so I think it's been a, a really heavy, heavy listening is what we've been calling it in the over the past couple months. So so you probably see us pop up on a lot of different calls and groups, and I see a lot of the same people in in regular causing meetings as well, which is I think is a great thing to see that connection because I think that was actually one of the things that was missing before is just being more connected with other resource providers and businesses out there. So, so it's good to see. So if there's one good thing that's been come out of being virtual, I feel like those connections have been happening more frequently. So some of the other things we've been doing with the food business resource center in particular during this time. So we are in the midst of a small farm e-commerce pilot program, which we're doing as an English and Spanish program. And that pilot program in partnership with the WSDA is basically to help small farms build out an e-commerce presence. So we've basically subsidized a year on one of the, the farm e-commerce programs. So, uh, and then also we'll have training and technical assistance to make sure they're set up on that. So that program, so we've chosen 15 farms to go through that program and the state we're at now is they're making decisions on which platforms they want to go with. So once that happens, then we'll be in partnership with these programs. We'll, also, we'll be making sure, okay, here's, here's assistance and support in getting you up and running on that. And then another thing we also did was a packaged foods on demand online course. So a lot of the content for that we took from, uh, uh, our a virtual food biz day that we had, but we had some great panels on packaged foods. So we basically took that, added a little bit of material and just created a course that provides a basic overview of the, the packaged foods process. So for someone, for a farm looking to add value added products or for a new business wanting to go into packaged foods, we just wanted to give an overview of here's what the process looks like. And here's a starting point for some resources you might go to, to, develop that idea so and then uh we're still doing business coaching along the way as well and we also offer overall as an organization we we have a lot of resources focused specifically on COVID-19 
So whether it's PPP loans, the disaster loans, a lot of that has kind of died down just because these programs are starting to end and a lot of people have already applied, but we still, but now we have also have a COVID-19 response team, which is really focused on, okay, how we start implementing safe start programs. How do we start looking into reopening? You know, what are the adaptations that need to be done to, to reopen and operate successfully as we start to come out of this pandemic. So we have a whole team dedicated to that. And that also spills over into the, into food as well. So, so those are all available to, to any, any client that we serve really. And I will say that PPP loans close the, the end of the month. And so there are, we actually are getting a little bit slammed with folks who are looking for that uh, last minute and farms are um, eligible for the PPP loan um, and as well as the idle of it. And, but that one's not closing right away. So. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so that's all. I think that that's all I had for for this. Uh, happy to take any questions if anyone has any. Uh, Steve, I see you, you contact info in the chat, so we'll put that info in there. Would you all? Yeah, and oh, go ahead, Nicole. <laughs> I was just gonna say I'd love if you also wanted to share more information about your other programs that are geared toward different communities or sectors as well. So I say that the, the three programs we have are the women's veterans and now the food business uh, are kind of our really established. But what we do sort of when we're looking at other communities, uh, they're not pro, like there's not a whole program necessarily around those. But, you know, we've done uh, a Sharia compliant loan product that's in the works um, with some partners. Uh, we have a lot of partnerships and collaborations with uh, different uh, more regional or like uh, more localized groups um, when we're looking at different like trying our outreach uh, for like uh, when we're thinking about people of color we're thinking about the immigrant population those sort of things so how we partner with those groups uh, a lot of times is how we think about making sure that we serve those communities and then making sure that our intake processes are how we're sort of the languages we the language we use those sort of things is uh, inviting to a, the spectrum of people that we want to make sure are getting these services. Um, so I would say, you know, all of the programs sort of have we do coaching trainings, and uh, so that could be anything from like I want to launch a business. To also, I want to grow. Uh, so I think Henry kind of focused a little bit on the, the starting, but we also do a lot of, I want to get a strategic plan. What does that look like? Um, and those sort of things. So it's not just a startup business, but if I'm looking to grow, we also have those. Is there anyone else on the call that has any questions for Dominique or Henry? I see that Jude has a question. Do you link people together to co-mentor one another or have support groups? Uh, not currently, but that's been something. We don't have anything formal. We did start, uh, there are some classes, like we have a Grow and Thrive series that's a seven week series for businesses that are in that growth stage trying to figure you know like that next phase of growth so kind of past the startup phase and with part of that the mentorship is a big piece component of that and we are doing we are talking more about figuring out how we can facilitate more groups and where clients that have gone through our programs or clients active clients can talk to each other and communicate. So, so that, yeah, that's definitely something that we, we have elements of currently and we're looking at ways to expand that because really that's a lot of the value is really in connecting clients together. So we also have things like a resource, like a internal client directory or it's not, or 
is for internal clients, but they can post on a public directory. So that's one way where they can see, okay, who's some, who are some other businesses that work with Business Impact Northwest? How can we connect with them? But we are, we, we would love to explore things like Facebook groups or, you know, uh, lots other platforms where clients can talk to each other. It looks like Dominique's re she's uh, relocating. Maybe I'm not sure if you can hear us, but we can't hear you. We'll just give them give her a moment. So I was also wondering if you had any particular stories to share about the recent training, like the application process and training that you just did with the WSDA and e-commerce um and how that how that in in particular like any just details or stories takeaways from that i'm back now <laughs> i think i i saw i'll add one i'll add one thing dominic might have some more to add but i'll add one thing on the that pilot program you mentioned uh it's definitely been a, a an experiment in offering a program in two languages so we're so that's something we definitely want to expand in the future so this has been a great pilot for figuring out how that needs to look and what what needs to be in place to do that so so yeah. that's been and, and thankfully like i think that it's the farm sector that you guys are like in general are much better at the sort of bilingual programming so we're learning a lot in that process um from really you guys who are who have done this a lot more than we have so it's been great did you guys hire a specific translator or have a was it was it an online did you have to host those all through zoom yeah so it's all through it's all through zoom uh and we yeah we hired um a translator to translate the zoom we use the zoom platform ultimately to do it um it was a little rough. Like we had to, we actually had to redo it because we didn't have it set up. We didn't give ourselves enough lead time to get it set up the first time around. But um, we worked it out. <laughs> and then, um, go ahead, Henry. Oh yeah, and another insight I would add is the the platforms we were working with have been really great in providing help and and ex explanations. They came on to do you know, an additional session that we could translate and they've just been really receptive to offering their support. So that the ones we're using are barn to door, local food marketplace and local line. So they've, all of those platforms have been really great. So that's been nice to see that they're really receptive to, to helping provide support to, to some of these underserved communities or those that don't typically utilize or have access to technical assistance resources. Yeah. Um, I would also add uh, a learning and what I was surprised is uh, I think when we built the pilot, be given that it's like in the middle of growing season and, you know, people are should like, this was met, you know, like there's not actually a lot of technical assistance around it. And like, um, you know, there's a minimum around, but then also kind of the idea that we'll continue to be available over time after the pilot. Uh, but how much people actually, even just on their initial intakes, were really interested in how do I maximize? Like we even had, and so we, we couldn't let them in this pilot, but we had several people who already were on platforms, but really were looking for how to maximize um, that e-commerce. Uh, so, kind of thinking about how to deliver those, I think a takeaway is how to deliver some of that um, that is time efficient, accessible, you know, like I just, we're hearing that it's wanted, um, but we also know that it's not super easy to get away right now to put time and effort into those things, so. I'm curious with, in, in particular with say social media marketing, were there a number of the um, participants that say use primarily their phone only 
for for items or do, I, I was just curious like in terms of, of that like in the different communities that you served through that program if you also had to take into consideration what their technical you know obviously there may be technical challenges or whatever yeah I would say so far everyone um, seems to have been have access to like doing it through a laptop but we haven't specifically asked um, so that might be a really good I think that's a really good follow-up question that we can ask to get feedback on the pilot and just kind of say kind of gauge a little bit of that to help design in the future I know that's a that's a question that came up in the use of the platforms like is it easy to do while you're kind of just out and a like about um, versus I have to sit down and take care of it but Yeah, through some of the work that we have done, um, we've had a couple grant process, uh, grants that we've submitted around specifically social media marketing for organic growers and how that affects their businesses and how they can use it as basically a free, quote unquote, <laughs> free marketing tool if they themselves can um, take up that capacity. Uh, so yeah, like that, some of that stuff, when you really begin to get into it, you can get really yeah well how are you using it when are you posting are you using your phone to post are you taking pictures of your phone are you yeah. yeah are you creating content that's bilingual also that's another really interesting thing is seeing um different language speakers trying to craft messages or blurbs and and uh in in two different languages and things like that mm -hmm. so we did a what we so how we kind of framed it and delivered a lot of the product or like the training was actually through a panel with other with farmers one from sort of each of the different platforms and focused on the conversation on how are they being successful on, through social media on the e-commerce palette like, um, and really what was taken away was a lot of uh, newsletter newsletter was like key for so many of them um, but then also sort of the Instagram posting, some of that stuff as well. Uh, and there was one Eastern Washington farmer who does also have his site in both uh, English and Spanish and tries to also make sure that his Spanish speaking customers have the same access. So that's an interesting, yeah, that, that was the first time. That was really the only time, only in that conversation, that topic really touched on, but interesting. Great. Well, is there anyone else with that has any questions or has any maybe related stories to um, f funding or financing strategies um, or has questions about working with marginalized communities and any of those things? No worries. I guess everyone's feeling mm -hmm. it's, a little, it's a little bit of a sleepy. We get it. It's, it's week 12, you know? <laughs> we're, all, talk, we're, we're talking about finances and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I really appreciate, really appreciate you guys coming on. What, what's, um, what's coming up for you? Are there, are there um, kind of anything that's in the works that you're looking to roll out? Um, anything that we should know of or be helping you um, promote? There's nothing specific. I think Henry, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we, as far as kind of what the next steps for the Food Business Resource Center um, are going to kind of continue to be, we have a stakeholder meeting in August uh, that we'll be sending out and looking for engagement to just kind of, kind of continue to help us roll out what this looks like. Yeah, yeah, we kind of had, we had an idea of what the resource center was gonna be, could be before COVID, right, right at, right, right when this pandemic started. So a lot of it was listening and now we're getting back to re-engaging into those, in those conversations to figure out, 
you know, are the same things going to be useful going forward? What else do we, can we do given what we, what's happened to make it impactful? So. Fantastic. Well, um, at this point, then I'd love to move along to just opening up the discussion. Um, and something that I also wanted, I, I see that we have two folks here in my little participant screen that I might call upon um, and put on the spot, Sarah Collier and Jennifer Otten from the UW. I was wondering if you would share some updates with the group while you're both here. I know that recently we may have actually oh, uh, gotten a grant. Yes. The uh, grant, which I know is not COVID related, but that and the sur food security survey, any other things you'd love to, I'd love to hear from, from you ladies. Sure. I'll let Sarah, can you hear me, Nicole? We can hear this you. Time. Yeah. Great. And I can uh, stop my screen so we can see you as well. Great. Um, so I'll, I'll share on the survey and then uh, see if we can hear Sarah and she can share on the USDA grant. Um, so I just wanted to go back to the survey and let everyone know that the survey, the, the joint um, UW and WSU food security and um, the Washington statewide survey uh, ends on July 31st. I put a survey link into the chat in case it's just easier to copy paste that out of um, out of the chat. It is for every resident of Washington State, and uh, we're really encouraging a uh, you know a really great turnout for the survey because we're we're actually going to provide this geocoded data to WSDA and at the county level, um, so uh, we can kind of do maps of where the need is happening across the state. So it's really important that we get a really good sample. So if everyone can send this out far and wide and even encourage you know, friend, friends and family to fill it out on your Facebook page, um, that kind of thing, it would be really, really useful uh, because this is, this is going to inform um, statewide and county, county efforts around different food security and assistance programs. But it's also looking at diet shifts, which um, I think are affecting all of us in terms of food availability in our grocery and retail and just how the change in frequency of shopping or where you shop has changed maybe the quality of the of the diet that you're consuming now. So um, if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer them. I will let you know that uh, the, um, so far it's been out probably about four, four-ish full days. We, we have about 600 surveys, but like Nicole was mentioning, um, the response rate in uh, kind of the eastern side of the state is much lower at this point. But I think everyone's sort of still spooling it out on the listserv, so I'm hoping to see those numbers go up. But if you're on the eastern side of the state and you can help us, that would be great. And I will, I'll stop there. And um, if anyone has questions, just put them in the chat box or jump on and, and I'll be happy to answer them. And then Sarah, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, I'll give a second if there's any questions about the survey. Um, I've been bouncing back and forth between phone and computer, but I think I'm here now. Um, we can hear you. Okay, so the other piece of good news that we have to share, and this is not directly COVID related, but probably worth sharing with this group, is that we're really excited to have just received jointly between the UW Food System Nutrition and Health Program and the WSU Food Systems Program, um, a planning grant for educational collaboration related to food systems. So this is for undergraduate education at both UW and WSU um, in the various food system related programs. And that's something that we're gonna be kicking off this fall and working towards a broader collaboration between the institutions for undergraduate education and for um, broadening the network of um, career paths and internship opportunities and things like that that the undergraduates in these programs have access to and are plugged into. Um, Jen, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, but I, I will add uh, sort of one kind of cool piece of all of this, which is, uh, and, and this is pandemic related, <laughs> um, that I think is really hopeful is, uh, you know, as, as, as we, you know, the students return in the fall, in some programs, it's definitely looking like there may be uh, fewer students or um, maybe less enrollment for this coming year, but that's not true of the food systems programs, at least at the University of Washington. And so I think uh, this is a really hopeful 
time for the space that we're working in. The students are really, you know, wanting to get involved. And in fact, we doubled our enrollment this fall for the undergraduate food major. So, um, so I'm pretty excited about this higher education grant because I think it's going to allow us to continue to grow. And we'll be looking to all of you, um, to all of the partners on this call to, you know, work with students or, or reach out to us um, for, you know, student projects that might help support you during this time or over the next year. Um, so we're really, you know, I, I think this higher education grants just kind of this hopeful opportunity right now through all of this. So I'm pretty excited about it. Me too. And I know one of the, one of the fun ideas that we tossed around when we were working on the outline for this grant was the idea of the conversation of, of hope being able to host some seminars that kind of brought the expertise of both the, the UW side of things and the WSU kind of ag and extension side of things. So I don't know if you have any more, anything else you kind of want to share about some of our fun brainstorms. Uh, we might be a little bit early on right now to share about it, but maybe we can come back and talk about that. I just need something to dream about, you know, Sarah. Yeah. Well, well, okay, if you wanted to go into brainstorming, one of the cool things to dream about also, in addition to the idea of, also now that it's a pandemic, the idea of virtually linking these, these really excellent seminars that go on at both institutions doesn't seem so out there at all. Um, one of the other cool things that we have brainstormed about is a lot of our, our you know, senior undergraduate students are doing capstone projects and internships and all kinds of things. And there's a huge amount of potential to link up students with different backgrounds from different institutions going in different sort of on different trajectories, but to start working together on those types of things as well. And I think that will become more visible and relevant to other community partners as well as we go forward. Yeah, thank you. Beautifully put. I would say that it, it seems to me in, in all things kind of one of the positives about working through this pandemic is the amount of collaboration that is happening, especially, you know, you see it here happening, unfolding here on these calls, but this particular grant and, the, and some of the planning and projects that will happen with it, I think, are really in alignment with that spirit of collaboration. So we are really excited about it as well. So, and we, um, hope to continue to engage all of our team members with the process and um, maybe you'll see some cool seminars broadcasted live and whatnot so is there anyone that has questions or um, has anything else they'd like to share with the group any upcoming events resources stories I'm new to the group, but I can share something. That'd be um, great, Christina. Yeah, thanks for joining us. You yeah. want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Christina. I'm a knowledge ecologist. My background is in wetland ecology, and I look at information flows and um, how human communities and organizations and networks act as living systems in a very literal, literal way. Um, I do system and network mapping. And I'm currently um, just starting to do a system map based on the resource that I put in the chat earlier. Um, that is a really interesting report done for Boulder County on the economic benefits um, of food localization, which is sort of, if you live in the Eastern Gorge, that might be where the food system justice conversation needs to begin. <laughs> um, I'm out in, in the gorge. Um, and so I'm doing that. Um, I also have a network map for pandemic response, uh, but it's very relevant for food projects and the co-ops that I'm part of are supporting that as a public resource. So uh, I can drop that link in and anybody interested get in touch. We'll be making a very specific food system view of the data as well. Uh, but it's, it's like if even just represented on this call, if all the projects piled into the map right now, you'd be able to find each other um, just with the questions that we're asking because we didn't exclude food. 
Yeah, excellent, Christina. Thanks for sharing. And just so you're aware, um, one of the things that we do during these hub meetings is collect all of the links and resources that are left in the chat box and they are kind of funneled through our hub website. Um, rather, whether they're posted as something to watch or share or added to our event calendar. So yeah, anything that you have um, that you would like to share, please, please post in there. I see that you're already going for it. Um, and Diane, Diane Smith, did you want to share more about this project you just posted about? Well, it's not, it's a, um, uh, it's a compilation of workshop um, uh, proceedings. Um, I think Jen um, was, was one of the writers and it came across one of my listservs and I found it to be a really helpful perspective on the future of food. And so as we're exploring where we're at now and what innovations we may want to um, pursue in the future, I just thought this might be a good resource for those folks that have a couple of extra minutes to review. Excellent, yeah, and go ahead, Steve, please jump in. Sorry about that, I was in the middle of typing um, and then I hit the wrong button. <laughs> so two updates from Viva Farms. Um, one, we had a really good call um, earlier this week in follow-up to the meeting two weeks ago where we were talking about the uh, Milpa uh, seed blanket uh, thing and the small working group that evolved out of that conversation met for the first time and had a good hour, hour and a half long conversation with um, Valerie Seacrest and some of the other folks that were on the call. Uh, and uh, Michaela, Kali from or, or Organic Seed Alliance. So we got some next, some tasks and some next steps and moving that, that project's moving along. So um, just wanted to report back on that, that out of the, our conversation and previous presenters that, you know, things do happen, hopefully. And two, uh, regarding the farmers to families food box, um, we've got confirmation that Viva Farms is gonna be uh, contracting, um, continuing on for the August, September period with uh, Puget Sound Food Hub that they want us to provide 500 boxes um, for that, you know, per week uh, for that period. And, uh, and that's on top of our oversubscribed 350 some CSA boxes that are fully booked up now too. So uh, we're scratching our heads to meet that demand and, but, uh, just want to give an update. Those, those have been two themes and two subjects that we've been talking about in the past and just wanted to share with the group where we are with that. Yeah, great. Thank you, Steve. And I wanted to let um, everyone know also we have invited uh, Michael Frazier and Rob Smith and Kate Smith and then yourself, Steve, you've been engaged, but invited Viva in general to come and do a deeper dive as a presenter on one of our upcoming hub meetings, I think in two weeks. So um, we can kind of get, uh, we'd love for, for to hear more about everything that's been kind of going on. Well, I would too, because I work remotely and we're all yeah. spread out and you know, the farmers are on the farm and they're doing their thing and the practicum students are. And I've been in my office basement since March 10th. So yeah. um, I will learn some things too on that call. Great. Yeah, and that's what we were hoping is to get some more stories about the farmers themselves and um, just, yeah, COVID related resources that they've been getting going and bilingual resources and all of the above, so. But, and I know that Viva's been in, uh, in communication with uh, Henry and Dominique and the folks there at Impact Northwest, there's been some new recent conversations going on. But um, again, unfortunately, we are, I guess a lot of us are feeling that, you know, we're, I, we're more in our silos than ever. So that's one reason why I enjoy this call. Just because not only do I learn about what's going on, but also just the social connection is kind of helpful for me right now in this where we're at. So thank yes, you. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, it's like a, a it's bittersweet because I feel like in some realms we're definitely con more connected or more collaborative and then definitely siloed 
in other ways for sure. Well, um, I just noticed um, not to call not to call her out or anything. I just noticed also Nora Frank. Are you still on the line? Would, do you have anything to share from um, any updates from your world? Hi, Nicole. Hi. Uh, I'm still here. Definitely multitasking at the same time. <laughs> um, updates in my world. Um, yeah, I just, we're moving forward with some of our COVID-19 rapid response funding that we got through the Native American Agriculture Fund that Valerie and I kind of talked about um, a few weeks ago. And um, just working with partners like EcoTrust and Flower Hill Institute out of New Mexico to um, start moving forward on our assessment and identification of um, distribu distribution channels for our Native food producers and fishermen. and um, what a business development plan would look like um, just to regionalize and localize some of our food distribution here in the Northwest for our tribes. Um, so that's a really exciting project that it's, it will be happening very quickly <laughs> once we hit the ground running. Um, also with that, we are in development of some webinars. Um, it's kind of similar. It reminds me a lot of the Cultivating Success workshops that I've had conversations um, with Laura Lewis about, and um, but these are more tailored to what the business assistance or finance um, side of things would look like for a native, um, potential native food producer. Uh, and then just some food sovereignty webinars in addition to all of that. So just trying to figure out, you know, as we are moving our work plans to the virtual world, what that looks like and um, we'll be doing some strategic action planning with our Northwest Tribal Food Sovereignty Coalition. Um, and so I'm just trying to, if anyone has, I'm looking for tools <laughs> of how to do some strategic planning um, virtually, but still have it be as fruitful as if you were actually in person doing the brainstorming. Um, I mean, I'm very familiar with Zoom. I'm just trying to think through, you know, if, if I have community members who are not as familiar with the online platforms, how do I still capture um, their thoughts and their ideas um, and whatnot? So I'm just, I'm just brainstorming some of that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I have for right now. Excellent, thanks for sharing. And yes, you definitely are not alone in the reimagining of educational tools and I can only imagine for how do you ever replicate a tactile experience and yeah for for meant for some of us um you know we're even moving more towards auditory experiences which anyone can plug in and listen to at any point um from an accessibility standpoint it might be a little easier but you lose that back and forth or you lose the the kind of, yeah, the, the reciprocity of conversation and storytelling. So um, yeah, please continue to stay engaged. And even if you would ever want to follow up with me specifically, we have some cultivating success courses that are coming out, but we might have some tools for you to use that could be augmented. Um, and I'm always happy to brainstorm too. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Nicole. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share or have updates about? You can also feel free to continue to use the chat box. Uh, you can post resources, events, anything that might be coming up. I'm wondering, I'm gonna pick on two people. I'm wondering if either Chris Iberly or Cheryl Weiser if either of you have anything to share about what's going on in your worlds for either ELF or Farm to School. Hi there, you can pick on me. Hi everybody. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so I'm really, uh, this is exciting, but ELF, for those of you that don't know, it's the Eat Local First Collaborative. And so this is a group of uh, partner organizations, including WSU, Food Systems, uh, Sustainable Connections, Tilt Alliance, 
um, and uh, Pierce County Fresh and many others that have gotten together. And we are in the process of uh, the first thing that's happening is we are going to be launching soon. Uh, we're working on the landing page now is uh, kind of the first iteration of the Washington State Food and Farm Atlas. And so uh, the final design is happening on this page and there will also be links to other, uh, other groups uh, throughout the state that have directories including uh, Gorge Grown, um, Thurston County, uh, Walla Walla Grown, uh, and uh, so also what we're doing, this will be a great place for uh, farms and farmers markets that want to be able to list on one of these partner sites, including WSU and TILT, which both have statewide sites. There are easy links, um, there are, it's free. Um, and so um, that is what's happening in a nutshell. And I can go ahead and um, I will put up a link to the ELF collaborative right now, kind of a landing page that is currently exists. And then the work that will be happening moving forward is moving to merging of uh, lists with the uh, partner groups um, that are part of ELF right now and that are um, doing a joint MOU. And um, this is exciting. This has never happened before uh, as, a, um, as a place for, uh, for folks to go to to find uh, their farms and their farmers markets. Nicole, do you have anything to add? I'm doing the quick deep, the deep dive here. Um, That's fantastic. That's great. Yeah, I would just, in general, there's a there's a big statewide effort to to really encourage farmers of all scales of all production systems to get themselves listed um, and wherever and however they can. And so we're really really grateful uh, for Cheryl and Gwen and the Tilth team and everyone at Sustainable Connections who's and um, our different coordinators throughout the state that have been really helping with those efforts. So thanks for sharing, Cheryl. Yeah, and just one more thing I do want to add is that this is also open to urban farmers. So, and also uh, we really are doing a push to get more listings from around the state. So anyone that is on here from Eastern Washington, Central Washington, Southwest Washington, please you feel reach, reach out to me. I'll just put some information in the chat, go for it. Thank you, Cheryl. And anyone else? Um, Jason, would you like to share with us? I know that um, Jason Alves, looks like you have an opening yep. application problem. Definitely the link shared in the chat box, but uh, the Washington State Chapter for the Farmer Veteran Coalition um, has a fellowship, or not sorry, sorry, fellowship, but professional development funds available to uh, farmer veterans uh, seeking training opportunities. Understanding that a lot of those uh, aren't quite ready right now, uh, um, since everything's kind of changed, but that funding is available to uh, veterans um, that are seeking uh, training or professional development um, in agriculture. And I'll add that um, Jason, we just got Jason booked as a presenter on one of our upcoming hub meetings as well. And we'll be talking more about um, different resources for veterans and also different uh, farm and food education programs specifically that are emphasized um, or going to be um, launching for veterans. Thank you, Jason. And I'm going to call on one more person and then we can wrap up unless there's anyone else that would like. I'm going to just ask again if Chris Iberly, if you have anything you wanted to share about Farm to School or Food Hub information. Uh, yeah, I can. Uh, dangerous giving me the last I word. See, I wanted to see if you gave yourself a haircut again yet, too. That's all. I can <laughs> track because it's. Not yet. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I can give kind of a general update on, on farm to school and, and school meal programs, um, along with what WSDA farm to school, what I'll be working on within that, which may touch on some folks work um, in the Washington State Farm to School Network too. Um, so one is everyone, um, school nutrition programs are in the transition now away from the school year into summer meals. 
So summer feeding programs are going to be starting in a lot of your areas if you're county based. Um, so that'll be those are big anti hunger programs and probably going to be um, in even greater demand than years past is the guess. Um, so we'll be working on um, maintaining those as places that farmers can sell product as well and supporting farm to summer. Um, and encouraging those meal programs to be buying local, especially because summer is a great time to do that. Um, so we'll be working with OSPI on um, how to support those meal sponsors in buying locally. Um, the next couple of months too, we'll be looking at um, how to help schools prepare for the next coming school year uh, and how farm to school and, and sourcing local products and buying from local farms can be a part of their uh, 2020 21 uh, meal program, however that looks, which is still in the works and varied. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely preparing schools and farmers to be partnering and getting more, getting local product into their school meals, um, despite the distancing and COVID challenges uh, and different models they're using um, into next school year. So making sure to help schools keeping to incorporate local products. Um, one component of that, and this is something I would love to hear anybody that um, might want to work on uh, in your area, getting more processed and prepped products, especially like individually wrapped, locally sourced, Washington grown items, um, processors, farmers, uh, you know, manufacturers, food companies, uh, getting some products into, we have some great examples and things that are actually really successful in the spring um, from some um, processors that we are at farms um, for schools that are using products that can already existed, but that's gonna be in a big demand and a big part of what farm to school looks like um, with COVID meal distribution in the coming school year too. So I'm hoping to work with um, partners and processors and farmers um, on getting some of those opportunities and products in the pipeline uh, over the next couple of months. And then the Washington State Farm to School Network is gonna be working on assessing kind of the gaps and needs and, and bottlenecks and funding needs or policy needs um, for school meals, but farm to school especially, um, especially in our COVID-19 uh, context um, for the next few weeks. Thank you, Chris. Anyone have questions or comments for Chris? And I'll end with a question too. I know I missed um, a lot of, uh, sorry, I joined late, so I missed some of the discussion, but um, definitely curious now that counties are getting CARES Act funds. Um, what examples or who, which counties might be focusing on using those funds for local purchasing, whether that's farm to food bank or other, you know, distribution models um, and, you know, helping get some of those funds uh, into purchasing uh, from farms and, you know, supporting farm businesses locally. Does anyone on the call have any information about that? I know we don't necessarily have a lot of county directors or anything on the line today. Diane Smith, do you have any information on that? Oops. No, I really don't. Um, I think there's a lot of discussion, but I don't have it all collated and processed yet. Still working on it. Yeah, I think in some places it is in the works because the funds are still kind of in, again, in the pipeline, but and plans are being made. So. I guess maybe a, a future discussion to check in on and see how we might be able to support that too at the regional markets uh, program at WSCA. Yeah, that'd be great. What um, if it made sense to bring that conversation here or, or others? It looks like also Jennifer Otten just had a question. We'll be looking at how this might affect nutrition intake. And Jennifer, I'm assuming you mean this the change the changes in school lunch offerings. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. Um, can you say more about the question? Go ahead, go ahead and ask your question, Jennifer. Sh sure. Um, Chris, I was just wondering, like, with the move to some of the more ready-to-eat packaged foods, um, if, 
if there will be any just sense of how this might be changing nutrition intake for the kids or anything like that? Will you be looking at any of that? Um, not in a broad sense. I mean, the, the flip side is that anything that the schools are serving now, I mean, they serve, you know, packaged products in normal school meal times too. Um, and all those have to meet the nutritional requirements under USDA. There's a few waivers for meal program, uh, meal pattern compliance, but those are only case by case. So it doesn't necessarily have a, a big impact. Um, but we'll see. I mean, yeah, there's, I think that's part of my goal too, is to make sure that there's fresh and locally sourced products that are uh, available and, and options for schools to use and put into sack bunches um, along with the things that they're already putting in there. So uh, I don't know who's working on OSPI. It would be great to ask if they're doing any kind of nutritional analysis, but um, overall, I mean, all the things that are going into those sack bunches do need to meet the nutritional requirements for USDA. Great. Thank you. It would be, it would be fun to show if the fresh and local improved, improved um, the nutrition a little, I think. Yeah. I think that it will. I mean, I've seen photos of the sack punches, um, such as, I mean, the reality of the situation and what schools can actually use. That's a no, no prep uh, item. Um, and like I said, I, I think there is some room for improvement here. Thank you. Anyone else that has any more questions or comments or anything to share about their work or programming? I would love to get a sense from everybody here if, if people just want to type it in the chat or if you could wave a magic wand and have groups that you're seeing from your perspective coordinating on one thing to improve the food system during the COVID situation and beyond, what would that be? What do you think is the most important thing? And that we don't have time to do a round, but if you could just put it in the chat, that would be super valuable from a systemic point of view. Yeah, that's definitely a tricky one, um, Christina. And I, I encourage folks to respond in the chat like she's asked. Another thing I wanted to point you towards also is if you go to our food systems website and you go to the needs assessment tool page, the NAT page, if you scroll down to the bottom, we have been posting the reports from that needs assessment survey every week. Um, and oh, it, awesome, thank you. Yeah, it gives you a really quick shot each week of Basically, it has a sliding scale of like high need, low need, and it's everything from uh, food security to business planning to PPE. So I would encourage you to take a look at those reports and even go through the survey yourself. Um, I will drop a link in the chat. Thanks so much. But if anyone else wants to respond, please feel free to jump in as well. And you can give your two cents about what you think the silver bullet might be. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share? Um, also, oh, I'm seeing here Jude and Chris. Did you guys work that out, the acronym? I wasn't sure if you were asking about which acronym. We just have so many. Jude, if you want, I don't know if you have audio capability, Jude, if you wanted to go ahead and. Could also have been my just throwing a B. King County Local Services unincorporated grant that should open today or next week. Um, it's a five th up to 5,000 reimbursable grant for unincorporated King County. So that, which is, comes from CARES money. But 
is just for any, it's for any businesses, but includes farms because that's a big part of um, some inc unincorporated King County. The county. I'm not sure if we're answering. The new program, she asks, what statewide by county? Like, might be multiple conversations happening. <laughs> yes, I think, and it could, is, it is definitely possible. And Anza's got some, got some feedback there. Okay, well, um, I think we're, I think we're about wrap time, getting to the point where we're wrapping up. And um, thanks again, everyone for joining us. The next Food Systems Hub meeting will be next Friday, July 3rd, um, starting at 10 a.m. Our website continues to be up updated weekly, so everything that was shared today or that will be coming out over the next couple days will be bopped on to our Hub website. Um, please take a moment to introduce or to familiarize yourself or take the two different surveys that we talked about today, our ongoing food systems NAT or needs assessment survey, that's the weekly survey, as well as the UWSU Washington State Food Security Survey, which we please ask that you share widely with your networks. It's very consumer facing. Um, we want as much data from that as we possibly can get. And uh, continue to share your events. You can reach directly out to me um, and email. My email is nwitham at wsu.edu. And um, thanks again for your participation. Be well, everybody, and have a fantastic weekend. <laughs>